Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to DeVos Gymnasium for tonight's CCAC matchup. Of course, the host Trinity Christian Trolls taking on the St. Francis, Illinois Fighting Saints who are receiving votes in the most recent, in fact, as of today, most recent NAIA Division II basketball poll. Fighting Saints 5-1, and 2-0 and oh inside the CCAC. Trinity Christian 3-2. Three and zero inside the CCAC, and right now atop the conference, it should be a very good one here. Coach Owens and head coach John McGinty set to do battle. St. Francis on a four-game winning streak as Trinity Christian. We'll step aside for the national anthem starting lineups and opening tip on the way. Fighting Saints, the visiting squad tonight, again on a four-game winning streak. They put up 100 points twice within this four-game winning streak. Once versus Calumet, 119 to 30 in the victory, of course, and against Trinity International, 101 to 41. The other two victories within the four-game winning streak include St. Francis of Indiana and Bethel as well. Their lone loss comes against the hands of Marion from Wisconsin. Starting lineup, it's a pretty experienced squad. They've been to the NAI seven times running now, including last season. Jordan Pyle in the starting lineup, the reigning CCAC Player of the Year. She is in the lineup, the 5'11 and graduate student from Australia, along with Hannah Switek, the 5'8 senior from Oakland, Illinois. Number 23, Justine Charlesworth. Charlesworth, the 5'8 graduate student, along with Braxton Mickens, the 5'6 junior point guard. And Georgia Bolton for St. Francis rounds out their starting five. Director of Athletic Communications, Greg Gorham, handling public address duties tonight. Layla McNeil being announced, the 5'6 junior from Chicago. Sophia Radish, the 5'7 senior from West Chicago. Wearing number five, Katarina Savick, the 5'5 junior from Frankfurt, Illinois. Coming off a 27-point performance against Dort last weekend. Hannah Sharinga, the 6'1 sophomore from Elmhurst, Illinois. And rounding out that starting five, Faith Davis, a 6-foot sophomore from Bourbon, Illinois. Trinity Christian's going to need some shooting tonight. So Faith Davis, I think, will uh, have the green light, if you will, to take a few shots early, try to get her going because St. Francis puts up 84 points a ball game, 84 and a half to be exact. They like to shoot it from beyond the arc. We talked about their propensity to score 100 or more. 
Layla McNeil averaging 15 points and 8 rebounds. Katarina Savick, 16 points, 4 rebounds, 4 assists. So you know Savick and McNeil will be ready to go. They'll be counted on a lot as well. And it looks like we've got an opening game uh, technical foul. And so before the official opening tip, which rarely happens, there is a there is one point scored before the opening tip. I'm not sure I've ever done a game where that's actually happened in real time. But I do believe there, there may have been something with the scorebook, perhaps for the home squad or had to be on the home squad, which prompted the technical foul to be assessed. So Justine Charlesworth gets the scoring started officially. And now the opening tip, and the Saints will have control. Switek, left side to Georgia Bolton. This is Jordan Pyle, the reigning CCAC player of the year. Nice drop step, too strong off the window. And the rebound is controlled by Sophia Radish. First offensive possession for Trinity Christian in their alternate gray unis. At that cyan or baby blue light colored numbers and letters with the navy blue trim. St. Francis getting in their road brown. White letter, white number. Ten to shoot. Savick looking for Faith Davis. She's open. Fires. No good. Rebound fought for. Controlled by Braxton Mickens. Now we mentioned in the brief pregame there, you know, with Trinity Christian looking to keep up the scoring pace as and a Switek knocks down the first field goal of the game. So Switek with a first three-pointer. Coming off a career high, eight assists against Bethel. She's averaging just over nine points a ball game, and it's four to nothing in favor of St. Francis. Talked about Faith Davis and her shooting ability. The first possession, they set up a play just for Faith. Let's see if they try to pick and pop again. Seven to shoot, however. 8.40 to play. This is Layla McNeil. Long jump shot, baseline, no. Rebound nearly in the hands of Radish, and here come the Saints. Switek looking to push. She leads for the trailer. Bolton, she fires a three. That's well off the mark on the right side. Mickens on the boards. Down on it as well was Justine Charlesworth. And they call a traveling violation on Charlesworth, the 5'8 graduate student from Wanata, Indiana. Josie Graffio checking in for the Fighting Saints here early. Coach John McGinty. Not afraid to go deep into the roster and the rotation. Davis three-pointer, that is off the mark as well. Nearly two minutes gone by, and the Trolls have yet to score here. Wow. A zip pass to the Trinity Christian bench. Man, that's a turnover for the Fighting Saints. Graffio, the graduate student, 5'10". From Mantino, Illinois. Again on the floor for the Fighting Saints. Same starting five on the floor for Saint Fran or excuse me, Trinity Christian. And that's a turnover for the Trolls. Switek again leaves. This time it's Mickens. May have gotten away with the travel. Absorbs the contact. That's good defense. I'm not sure there was contact there from specifically Hannah Sharinga. That's one of those situations where, you know, Sharinga's 6-1. So it, you may get the impression from, from being on the floor that uh, she may not have had her, her arm straight up from this vantage point. It did like... It did look like she had her arm straight up. If there was going to be a foul call, it thought it would be initially on the the contact. And a body-to-body. -body. Mickens, I believe, went into Savick as she misses the first free throw. One of two for Braxton Mickens, the 5'6 junior from Indianapolis, averaging 12 points and now some pressure here from the Fighting Saints. Trinity still looking to score. Now Radish pushing the pace. Radish right down Main Street. Sharinga, not a Savick. 22 to shoot inside. Sharinga, and she was hacked. Good patience by Trinity Christian. And I'll tell you, despite no field goals here with 7.28 remaining in the first quarter, 
They have been patient on offense. Alina Janke now checking in for St. Francis, 6'2 graduate student. No shortage of experience for John McGinty. He's got five graduate students on this roster. Many of them play. Janke from Germany. One of two goes Sharinga, but the Trolls are on the board. They trail 5-1 to one with 7.20 to play here first quarter. Emil Williams Jr. here with you. I got my main man Anthony on the ones and twos in the camera. Janky couldn't get it to go with the left hand. Good drop step, but nothing doing. This is McNeil, the pull-up J. Too strong, follows her own shot. Inside with the lefty, that won't go. Two very good opportunities there for McNeil, unable to cash in. Three minutes gone by, the driving kick. Mickens, left corner three. That is an air ball. Rebound and control. Janky blocked by Faith Davis. And now Savick looking to push. Savick nowhere to go. They got Sharinga up top if they like to. Instead, it's Savick. She will take it herself. Nothing doing there. And Jordan Pyle comes away with the rebound. She averages five rebounds a contest. Nice move by Pyle. The kick, Switek. She's got one three on the way already. That's no good. Offensive rebounds and caught napping there is Sophia Radish as Mickens was wide open. Seven to one in favor of St. Francis. Again, receiving votes as of today. The first NAI D2 women's basketball poll. McNeil flashes up high. Back to Sharinga. Lines up a three. It's off the mark. Strong side rebound control by Charlesworth. Quickly up ahead to Pyle. Pyle inside the dump to Janky, and she is fouled by Savick. Trinity Christian still looking for their first field goal. Their lone point comes from the free throw line. We'll see Destiny Goodwin checking into the contest along with Amina. Alexander for Trinity Christian. If there is one thing that uh, I'll get back to that point in one second. One of two. Bill Jenkins is eight to one. Destiny Goodwin is someone who can get you buckets right off the bench. So I anticipate her to be very active here and be in the offense here with Savick. And now Savick throws up the, her right hand with a thumbs up. Her thumb is up. She calls out the play. He got seven to shoot. Alexander lines up a three. It looks good. No. And nearly five minutes gone by. Trinity Christian still looking for their first field goal. This has kind of been the recipe for St. Francis as well as of late, getting out on top of their opponents very early. That one is short. Rebound loose and controlled. Still out of bounds. And remains into the hands of St. Francis with 5.05 to play. Hannah Sharinga. Again, the lone Trinity Christian troll to score. That's from the free throw line. Anna Switek to inbound. Justine Charlesworth on the floor with Jordan Pyle. Josie Graffio back into the ball game. This is Pyle. One drop step in the lane. Nice seal by Jordan Pyle. And it is 10 to 1. We're under five minutes in the Trolls. Still trailing by just single digits despite not having a field goal to this point of the ball game. This is McNeil. Had a double-double versus Northwestern in Iowa. Speaking of McNeil, Alexander again, the high arcing shot. That three-pointer is no good. Pyle, can she try? Nope. Good. Ah. Ah, nice job by Amina Alexander. I wasn't sure. I thought that would have been off of her hands. But Pyle got a little bit of a... A little bit of the basketball there with the right hand, and it went out of bounds.
quick timeout on the floor. We will see Georgia Bolton check back in for St. Francis coming up next. Both players, or excuse me, both coaches already into their and their rosters and their rotations. The first play of the game for Trinity Christian went to Faith Davis, trying to get her open for a three, trying to get the scoring started, be active. But right now it's just about putting the putting the ball into the basket for the trolls of Trinity Christian. Savick walks it across. Not a good one. High elbow there was McNeil. Sharinga quickly double team. Defensively being swarmed. Good one that was blocked there by Switek. And now Destiny Goodwin hits the deck hard right in front of the Fighting Saints bench. Looks like the ball will remain, certainly. I wasn't sure if there was going to be a foul call. I thought there would be, and there was. The first personal on Braxton Mickens, her first, the team's second. 4.06 to play, first quarter. Trinity Christian trails by nine if you're just joining us. They have yet to uh, score a field goal in this one. This is Goodwin with 12 to shoot. Goodwin looking. McNeil flashed momentarily. She leads for Savick, does Goodwin. Savick inside the scoop on the other side. Nope. Good D. Savick to McNeil. The lay-in is good. And with 3.43 left to play in the first quarter, the first field goal. That was set up by the defense. McNeil and Savick converged to double team in the backcourt. Savick pokes it away right into the hands of McNeil. And now the foul on McNeil on the drive from Hannah Switek. 5'6 junior from Jefferson. Jefferson Community College. Leads the team in rebounding, does McNeil. Amina Alexander giving Coach Owens some good minutes here early. Had a couple of three-point shots. The high archer was not going to, uh, or was not falling. But there is one small Achilles heel, I guess you could say, for St. Francis, Illinois. As a team, they shoot free throws at 64%. So if it gets down to the free throw shooting situations that certainly Trinity Christian, that would mean this would be a close game certainly throughout, potentially. That would fall into the category and the advantage slightly, not by much though, into the hands of Trinity Christian. And kind of an unforced turnover there. Savick trying to get it to Goodwin and right off her hands and out of bounds. Trolls still trailing by just single digits. Nice hesitation, and then the, the Jets to turn it on, but Pyle couldn't finish. Now Goodwin loses the basketball. Sharinga is there to handle. Into the hands now of Savick. Number 2.45 to play. So Leah Pellegrini said to check in for St. Francis. 10 to shoot. Savick inside. McNeil, quick shot with the left hand. Too strong with 2.30 to play. Pyle inside. Mickens baseline, and she is fouled by Savick. And for Katharina, they call her Kachi. That's going to be her second personal foul. And that's going to get Sophia Radish off the bench. Well, Savick, who has yet to score. In foul trouble here, the team's leading score at 16. She heads to the bench with two fouls. Solid crowd on hand, but the energy lacking a little bit, and understandably so, as Mickens knocks down a pair. Thirteen to three. 
With 2.14 left to play here, first quarter. McNeil, jump shot, that is too strong. And I think you want to see the Trolls as a squad try to find something in the paint. Nice drive to the cup there by Josie Graffio. Her first field goal, now it is 15 to three. One of 14 is Trinity Christian here in this first quarter from the field. 0 of five from the three point line. This is the team that won the CCAC Conference Tournament Championship. Oh, Radish gotta be careful, that was almost three seconds. Now with five to shoot, Sharinga bounce pass inside, Radish with two. Radish with one, puts it up off the glass. No, gets her own rebound. Nope, fought for it, had it for a second. Charlesworth had it, and now here come the Fighting Saints. Pyle, nearly stolen by McNeil. She had Graffio there. She had seen her on the other side. Long three, Charlesworth, off the mark. Good one over the rebound. No numbers there for Trinity Christian. They've got a few trailers, though, with a minute left to play here in the first quarter. Coach McGinty motioning to the officials that Radish is carrying the basketball. 48 seconds to play on the game clock. Here in the first, under eight to shoot, and that one's stolen away. Pyle turns, keeps that left foot pivot. Full timeout with 32.8 left, and certainly the energy on the bench for St. Francis and the Fighting Saints on 100, if you will. They lead it 17 to three, just shooting five of 15 from the field, but that is more than enough at the moment. And just one of six from three point land, especially for a team who shoots it at 39% from three. But Trinity Christian, we've seen them. And some great victories here especially opening up the season, for example, against Cardinal Stritch, having some big-time quarters. The third quarter of that game specifically comes to mind. So they got out to a very nice start to the season, 3-0. They lost their last two in the Iowa event against Dort and Northwestern from Iowa, and now facing uh, probably or arguably the toughest squad they may face in the CCAC all season, of course, aside from St. Xavier, who is always a prominent figure along with St. Francis and certainly Olivet Nazarene. So what does Coach Owens draw up here is the question. This quarter I thought the squad showed really good patience early on trying to find their offense, run a few plays. Five second differential between shot clock to game clock. Radish on the drive, looking for Davis. Now it's up top to Sharinga. Back to Radish. Again, Savick on the bench with two personal fouls. Tried to lead Sharinga. It's stolen away by Mickens. Tight ropes that baseline to keep it in bounds. Goodwin got her hands up. It's in the hands of Trinity Christian. One second to play, Radish. And after one quarter of play, your score, St. Francis 17, Trinity Christian 3. Second quarter coming your way next here on the Troll Sports Network.
Ready for basketball. Quarter number two is underway. The Trolls will have it. They go Radish, Davis. Sarah Page into the ball game for the first time. Sharinga and Destiny Goodwin. Radish pulls up a shot. Too strong and rebound to Pyle. Jordan Pyle along with Georgia Bolton. Pyle the kick. Switek already with one three. The drive. Right hand lay in. No. And a whistle. It's on the low left block near the baseline. And it's going to be on St. Francis. on Braxton Mickens. That's her second. So Mickens heads to the bench. So again, Bolton, Janky, Switek, Pyle, and Charlesworth on the floor for the Fighting Saints of St. Francis. Located in Joliet. 15 to shoot. Good one for the Trolls. Paige, can she get something fired up? No. Nope. Trolls looking for offense. I think Coach Owens looking for a couple of different combinations. Long rebound into the hands of the Saints. Pyle on the drive. And her progress was impeded by Hannah Sharinga. But she had Elena, Elena Jenke, or Alina Jenke, excuse me. And the right corner ready to catch and shoot. Call the foul on Sophia Radish. That's her first. Of course, the team's first of this quarter. Janky puts it on the deck. The long 6-2 frame. Cannot get it to go. The player from Germany. Former squad, Trinity International, and Radish able to draw a foul. That might be the best antidote right now for the Trolls. As Hannah Switek, that's her first personal. You can figure out a way to draw a couple more fouls, get yourself to the free throw line, develop a little bit of rhythm here. Page, one dribble and traveled with it. Sarah Page getting some time, her first year on the squad last season. She's got some shooting ability as well, and I know one of the reasons she is certainly on the floor, the six-foot senior from Keene, Texas. Pyle, again the driving kick. Charlesworth wide open, and she buried that one. You can't leave a player that shoots it at 45% from three that open. That's her 21st make of the season. She was 20 of 44 coming into tonight's contest, and it's a 17-point advantage for the Fighting Saints. Still just one field goal here for the Trolls. Radish, that long free throw is no, or excuse me, long three-pointer is off the mark and no good. Pyle. Shot fake. And the simple drive in, stop and pop. And Pyle now with six points. Sharinga looking, 16 to shoot. Radish, Davis, no spacing there on that side of the floor. Seven twenty to play. Janky, good ball movement here. Graffy on the drive, again the Switek kick. And an offensive foul, and Coach McGinsey on the other side cannot believe it. Looking solid in the sport coat tonight. Layla McNeil back in. Katarina Savick back in. Sharinka and Radish will take a seat. Rachi Savick back on the floor, playing with two personal fouls. Nearly three minutes gone by here, second quarter. Again, one field goal so far for Trinity Christian in the ballgame. They are one of 18. Savick on the drive, and there's one. And that's what you miss when Savick is not on the floor. Very crafty with the basketball. Understands angles very well, right? Not a lot of people can kind of go underneath the side of the backboard 
and get the scoop shot to go up and in, let alone get the shot up. A D by McNeil. I see if this will get the Trolls with some energy here. No good on the three for St. Francis. Savick looking to drive. Savick right down Main Street with the left hand. No. And she will head to the stride. Well, they say the foul was before the shot. That's interesting. Layla Gibson now checking in. Gibson, the 5'4 freshman. And a quick whistle. And she gets in and picks up an offensive foul. The old moving screen there, so that's her first. 22 to 5, 620 to play here, second quarter. You got McNeil, your best defensive player on the best offensive player here for Pyle, or for St. Francis, excuse me. Nice D again by McNeil. Pyle wanted a foul call. This is Goodwin. Wide open was Davis. A little late on the shot, on the pass, that is. Oh, Savick there with a rebound, a putback. And she's going to head to the line. Lena Jane Key, Savick down to the stripe. 67% free throw shooter. First one rims in and out. Savick with a team leading 27 points versus Dort. And she goes one of two. Of course, the Trolls. Went up to Iowa, played Dort and Northwestern. Pyle. Five twenty-eight to play. McNeil. Jump shot off the mark. Fighting Saints on the drive. Switek pushing the pace. Twenty-six to six. And a travel. Prior to. Twenty six to six. Oh, Savick close to picking up her third personal foul there. They're trying to create some pressure in the backcourt. 4.45 to play. Second quarter. Pyle at the left elbow. Leaves for Charlesworth. 15 to shoot. Bolton left to right. Now leaves again for Charlesworth. And a wide open offensive board there. Those are the ones that hurt right there. Mia Kennelly coming out of nowhere seemingly for that offensive board. St. Francis, a team that has scored 100 or more points twice already this season. And Savick just working her way closer to the bucket. That foul is called on Mia Kennedy, the 5'6 freshman. Pyle and Graffio take a seat for St. Francis. Destiny Goodwin takes a seat for Trinity Christian. Radish enters the game. It's 
Two for two. Go Savick. Twenty-eight to eight. Alina Janky. Good move, kind of that turn, and swiftly with the left hand laid it up and in. 30 to 8 now for St. Francis. Here at the Voss Gymnasium, Emil Williams Jr. Appreciate Amy letting us know that the volume may have been a bit low. Hopefully that is a bit better and more to the liking. So you won't have to have your volume all the way up. Kennedy leaves. They find Switek up top. Lost it. That was picked by McNeil. Radish to McNeil with the left-hand layup. No, got her own rebound. Fought for. She still has a hand on it and still with a hand on it. Was Elena Janke. Jump ball is called. And St. Francis has the possession arrow. Switek. Takes a seat. Delia Pellegrini, the 5'7 freshman, checks in for the first time tonight. 3.08 to play here in the second. Pellegrini. It's her head up, wants Bolton. Janky wants to post up McNeil. This is Janky. The spin move with the right hand off the other side of the window. Good way to use the 6'2 frame of Elena Janky. It is 32 to 8. It's been all St. Francis in this one. Beautiful play there. Savick to Sharinga. She's going to go to the line. They're just joining us. St. Francis won the first quarter 17 to 3. And it's really just been about the poor shooting tonight for Trinity Christian as a team. They are just two of 23 from the field, including 0 of 10 from three-point land. Where they have had some success early has been at the free throw line. It is now five of seven as a team. Sharinga one of, or make it two of four, excuse me, as she splits a pair and a travel. We're going the other way. St. Francis, 12 of 28 from the field. And Pellegrini getting a couple of quick minutes, giving Switek a quick breather as she is back on the floor. Hannah Switek, Justine Charlesworth, who has the basketball. Georgia Bolton, Mia Kennelly, and Elena Janke. That's the five on the floor for St. Francis. Bolton on the drive. Again, the kick. Switek left side three. And another weak side rebound. Offensive rebounds have gone through the favor of St. Francis as well. Charlesworth, head and shoulder fake. Leads for Switek. Ten to shoot. Two minutes left to play here in the second. Make it six. Switek all the way to the rack. And a blocking foul call to Switek. Looked like she had lost the ball on the way up. Radish looking to draw the charge. That is the second on Sophie. Third team foul. One minute 56 to play here in the second quarter. Jordan Pyle, game high uh, eight points, excuse me, eight points, four rebounds for St. Francis. Six points for Hannah Switek, five apiece for Elena Janke and Braxton Mickens, four for Justine Charlesworth. And Switek has a free throw, kind of bounce around and rim in and out. One of two, and she will quickly check out. Switek, Janky out, Pellegrini, and Graffio back in for St. Francis. Destiny Goodwin on the floor with Kachi Savick, Layla McNeil, Faith Davis, and Hannah Sharinga. Goodwin's got to get it in. They find Savick. Savick working against Graffio. 
She gives up some size. Savick to the lane with the left hand lay in. Wow. Pat Arena Savick now with seven points. And two apiece from Sharinga and Layla McNeil. That's all the scoring. Let's see if the Trolls can give some effort here to end this half. We've got 90 seconds to play. Charlesworth, that three is no good. Another offensive rebound. But Graffio unable to convert on the putback. Savick looking to push again. Savick in the middle of the lane, draws the foul, and Katarina going back to the free throw line. Foul is called on Georgia Bolton. That is her second. Again, that Switek for Pellegrini switch here again. Janky will check back in in a moment as well. Savick to shoot two. First one is good for Kachi. Again, leads the team in scoring at 16.6 a game. Transfer from Moraine Valley. Two of two. There are the substitutions we just talked about. Lead down to 20 for St. Francis. Bolton, bounce pass in the slide tech. Savick playing with two personal fouls. Nearly a steal, and there it is. Savick again. Boy, it's been all Savick here in the second quarter. Lost the basketball, controlled by Bolton. McNeil now with it, and that one's going to be controlled by Trinity Christian. 58.4 left. I tell you what, despite the score, Trinity Christian playing with some fight. And now the officials confirm there may have been a, maybe the players kind of collided with one of our officials tonight or they're having a, a quick meeting. All right, looks like we're ready for basketball. Mia Kennedy back in, replacing Georgia Bolton with 58.4 left. Faith Davis to inbound. See if they can get something up top. This is Savick. They'll space the floor. Sharinga up top now to Davis. Back to Goodwin. She's got an open lane if she can get there. Sharinga, Savick. Savick's going to look to drive if she can. Now 10 to shoot. There's Savick in trouble, throws it up, and gets called. Oh, no, excuse me. They call her for a travel. I thought she was able to draw the foul. Thirty-seven point four seconds left. It's going to be a seven-second differential shot clock to game clock. Layla Gibson will check in for Katarina Savick. Josie Graffio checks out. Braxton Mickens into the game for St. Francis. Fighting Saints. They lead by twenty. They have never trailed in the ball game. Swiatek Gibson. Gibson right there, 12 to shoot. Let's see if they'll, they'll call for a screen. Switek is looking. Now it's Kennelly with six to shoot. Pickens, Janky with four, with three. Who's with the basketball with one, left it short, rebounding control to Sharinga. Five to go on the game clock. Someone's got to see it. Trolls, good one, pull up. It's good if it goes off the glass and good. Destiny, good one, with some good vibes heading into the half. In a game where Trinity Christian struggled to shoot from the field, Destiny Goodwin with one off the glass to go into the half, and perhaps that will get this troll squad fired up coming out of the break. We will find out. 33-16, St. Francis leads Trinity Christian. Before we head out, let's take a look at some numbers here. First for the Trinity Christian trolls, Katarina Savick, who was hampered early on and uh, with foul trouble with two fouls, came back in and really showed determination, fight, grit, 
uh, and just a desire to get to the painted area, get to the free throw line. Nine points, five of six from the free throw line, two of four from the field. Three points for Destiny Goodwin. Of course, you just saw that. Two from Hannah Sharinga and two from Layla McNeil. And for St. Francis, they are led by Jordan Pyle. Pyle, excuse me. Pyle with eight points on four of ten from the field. Four rebounds. Seven for Hannah Switek. Five for Elena Janke. Five for Braxton Mickens. Four for Justine Charlesworth. Two apiece for Josie Graffio and Mia Kennelly. Again, Trinity Christian shooting at four of 25 from the field. One of 11 from three. Seven of 10 from the free throw line. And, of course, St. Francis, 12 of 32 from the field, including 2 of 12 from 3, which is where they are excellent. Uh, I, I'm sure Coach McGinty's got to feel really good that they aren't shooting it great from the field, and yet they hold a 33-16 to 16 advantage, 7 of 12 from the free throw line. The turnover battle right now, 10 turnovers for Trinity Christian, 8 for St. Francis, excuse me, but 24 points. I beg your pardon, 10 points off of those turnovers is just two for Trinity Christian. St. Francis also holds the edge in the rebounding department. Six offensive rebounds for Trinity Christian. 13 minutes to go. We'll take a break. Halftime is here. Back with you with more. You're watching Trinity Christian Women's Basketball here on the Trolls Sports Network.
Welcome back to Trinity Christian Women's Basketball here on the Troll Sports Network. My name is Emil Williams, Jr. I got my main man, Anthony, on the ones and twos. Working the camera here this evening for this CCAC matchup. Of course, the host trolls here at DeVos Gymnasium and recently receiving votes as of today's first poll, according to the NEI D2 Women's Basketball Rankings, the St. Francis Illinois Fighting Saints. Of course, no strangers to NAIA tournament competition. In fact, they've gone there seven straight seasons. And right now, with a 5-1 overall record, 2-0 inside the conference, they are looking to move to 3-0, while CCAC uh, at the moment atop the standings, the Trinity Christian Trolls are in danger of losing their first conference game of the season. We talked about high scores and high scorers before we left. If you were with us, Destiny Goodwin had a big three at the buzzer to send Trinity Christian, at least for the momentary time, to the locker room in good spirits. They have struggled from the field, certainly to say the least. Trinity Christian, one of 15 in the first quarter, three of 10 in the second quarter. They are shooting just 16% again, four of 25 from the field. However, Katarina Savic Kachi, of course, as the team calls her nine points. A couple of steals. She's gotten herself to the free throw line. St. Francis is led, as always, typically by a balanced attack, but Jordan Pyle, the reigning CCAC player of the year, eight points, four rebounds on four of ten shooting, seven points for Hannah Switek, five points for Braxton Mickens, along with Elena Janke. Four for Justine Charles, worth two apiece from Josie Graffio and Mia Kennelly. Two points apiece for Hannah Sharinga and Layla McNeil, and that three, as we talked about, by Destiny Goodwin. St. Francis has the basketball first. Starting five on the floor for St. Francis. Destiny Goodwin gets the nod here for Trinity Christian. So it's Destiny Goodwin. Kachi Savick, Hannah Sharinga, Layla McNeil, and Faith Davis. 14 to shoot here. You see two players on the high post. They're running some planned offense here, as you can see. Now Savick into the lane, draws some contact. Tough shot. And that one is controlled by Georgia Bolton. Here come the Fighting Saints. Switek right down Main Street, blocked by Sharinga. And here comes McNeil. Layla McNeil looking to push. McNeil. Leaves for Sharinga. The kick. Davis open from downtown. That's a good shot for Faith Davis. They opened up the first quarter way back when, trying to get Faith Davis involved early and get her shooting abilities off to a good start as well. But again, another good shot. You'd love for Davis to continue to take that. Meanwhile, Bolton is open. She left that one way short. And something that the Saints have been very good at tonight, they've been very quick to offensive rebounds. And that is their seventh offensive rebound of the night. Coach Theo Owens in his third season at the helm here at Trinity Christian. McGinty, Coach John McGinty in his second year. On the bench for St. Francis. Mickens up top, back iron no good. And the team's leading rebounder with eight Layla McNeil handles another. Savick inside a good one. Good one turns. Now faces up and left that one short. I like that matchup, though. I, I think Destiny Goodwin can take Braxton Mickens down low. Mickens is left wide open, however, and she knocks a three-pointer down. Seven forty-five to play in this one, or in the third quarter. I beg your pardon. Thirty-six to sixteen. A quick shot there from Savick. Lead is twenty for St. Francis. The Hezzy and the foul, and Savick now with three personal fouls. She left early for a period between the end of the first and a good portion of the second before re-entering 
It's Katarina Savick with two personal fouls and now with three. So including that uh, that free throw, Mickens now on a four to nothing personal run there, including the three, make it two. She knocks down a pair. She scored the last five. She's gonna get a quick breather. The rotation patterns here for Coach McGinty and Alina Janke going size for size there as for the first time tonight. We see Chloe Captain, the 6'2 freshman, and she wants to post up immediately. So McGinty saw it and quickly countered with Janke. And Goodwin had her shot blocked by Janke. Gets her own offensive rebound, and she will head to the line. Lena Janke, Jordan Pyle, Josie Graffio, Justine Charlesworth, and Hannah Switek. Destiny Goodwin at the free throw line, first time tonight. Goodwin's first free throw is no good. One of two goes Destiny Goodwin. Thirty-eight seventeen. Charlesworth from downtown, that's good. Charlesworth with six. It's forty one seventeen now. Goodwin on the year, that 80% free throw shooter. Again, splits a pair on the other side. Stops and shots really is what uh, Trinity Christian is looking for. Captain from about 17 out. Janky wide open for it. Rebound loose. Goodwin. McNeil on her right. Pass was behind her and stolen away by Janky. And on the other side, a Trinity Christian Troll player is still down. Coach Owens going over to check. Trainers over to check as well. Oh well, we yeah, 616 left to play here in the third quarter. 41 to 17. We'll take a brief timeout. As Coach Owens again in the training staff checking on Katarina Savick at the moment. Quick timeout. We'll step aside. Back with you with more here on the Troll Sports Network. Back with you here, folks, and uh, unfortunately, Katarina Savick was able to walk off the floor on her own power, but with a noticeable limp. So Sophia Radish is into the ball game, and Savick who's trying to help spearhead a little bit of a charge at the end of the second quarter, is off the floor. Quickly, Hannah Switek on the other side for St. Francis. Quick timeout. That's a full timeout on the floor. It's a good timeout, I think, for Coach Owens because without Savick at this point, 
who's going to kind of be your your leader offensively. That's the question at the moment. With 5.57 left to play in the third quarter. This is good for a young squad, I believe, as well. The opportunity for continued growth. Who's going to step up? That's next. We'll find out on the Troll Sports Network. Trolls basketball scheduled to this point. They open with a win, 72-65 over Cardinal Stritch right here on their home floor, and then followed it up with a win over Calumet, 85-57, then went on the road to Trinity International and got their third consecutive victory of the season at 72-48. McNeil the pass to Radish, stolen away. Excuse me, up ahead, Mick Mickens. Continuing with the schedule, again, lost to Dort, 82-69, and to Northwestern, 83-61. The whistle blows. The foul is called on St. Francis as they tried to double up Layla McNeil in front of the scorer's table. 45-17. 5.42 remaining here in the third quarter. Well, St. Francis trying to avoid dropping three consecutive. Meanwhile, St. Francis on a four-game winning streak and looking to make it five. Foul was called on Mia Kennelly. That's her second. Team second here in the quarter. McNeil looking. The step back. Foot was on the line. Left it short. Destiny good with the rebound. Put back won't go. There's cap team. Good offensive rebound there. And 15 to shoot now for the Trolls. McNeil, Sarah Page, Destiny Goodwin. Page fires, will not get the roll. Captain kept it alive momentarily. Goodwin took a swipe at the ball from Charlesworth, and here comes St. Francis. Cross-court pass, Mickens lines it up and dials it in for three. Braxton Mickens. Specifically from three-point range, St. Francis starting to get into a little bit of a better rhythm from that vantage point offensively. They are 5 of 18 now from the three-point line. Radish draws two defenders, leaves her page. She'll fire one more time. That's off the mark. McNeil with a rebound. Out to Radish. Good one on the drive. A little too much English there. Captain again on the floor, but she's out of bounds. You know, Captain showing a lot of hustle. 48-17. Again, you look at the score. If you're just joining us, it's it's been all Trinity, or excuse me, St. Francis. The story really of the first quarter is kind of the story of the game where Trinity Christian just could not Get on the board from the field. They had one made field goal in the first quarter, and that's kind of been the story here. Doria Foxworth now into the ball game for Trinity Christian. 5-5 five -five freshman from Noonan, Georgia. Pyle on the drive. Nice spin move. Reigning CCAC Player of the Year. Pyle, eh, slightly quiet tonight, but Hannah Swiatek and Braxton Mickens have been very good for the Fighting Saints. McNeil calls out the play. Radish, Captain up top. Foxworth on the right side, thought about it. Now back to Radish. She'll dial up a three. That's good. 
First three-pointer for Sophia Radish. That's her first field goal of the game for Sophie. She's got three and averages five points a ball game. 50 to 20. St. Francis on top here. On the drive, Swiatek. Pile. Right corner three. Too strong and a rebound to Swiatek. Kind of one sub note from the offensive rebound perspective as Pyle right down Main Street lays it in. I talked about how St. Francis has beaten Trinity Christian to the def defensive boards, of course, resulting in now double-digit offensive rebounds. Two thirty-six to play here in the third quarter. Cap team. And they'll get Hannah Switek. A foul. That's a shooting foul. Got her on the right arm. Chloe Captain at the stripe. First free throw is no good. One of two. Those Chloe, those were her first two free throw attempts of the season. Pressure applied here from Trinity Christian. Leilani Harris into the game for the first time for St. Francis, and she quickly traveled with it. Harris into the ball game along with Leah Pellegrini. Alina Janke now back on the floor replacing Josie Graffio. 52-21. It's been all St. Francis, a double pump there. Maybe Pyle got a piece of it on that McNeil jump shot. Janke checks her feet. Line drive three-pointer from the right corner, no good, but another offensive rebound, Pellegrini. Niles for it, and Harris tried to save this time. Out of bounds on the baseline. It'll be Trinity Christian basketball. We'll see Doria Foxworth set to check in here for Trinity Christian. Oh, Layla Gibson, I beg your pardon. Layla Gibson into the ball game. Doria Foxworth already into the game. So it's Foxworth, Gibson, McNeil, Captain and Sarah Page on the floor. One starter with this unit. And that three-pointer short. Plenty of numbers here for St. Francis. Mickens will lay it in with the right hand. Fifty-four twenty-one. I get an opportunity to see a few players we haven't seen this season. And, boy, that's what St. Francis actually has been doing to a lot of teams. It's like if you want to get a look at your roster, well, just play St. Francis because they have been getting out in front of their opponents pretty early. We mentioned their prop propens prop uh, me, propensity to score 100 or more points. They've done it twice already this season. Elena Jenke, by the way, had that last bucket for St. Francis. Harris dials up a three. Now Harris into the scoring column. It's 59 to 21. St. Francis. They have not trailed. Trinity Christian will try to hold for the final shot. A drive and kick McNeil. Quickly double team. McNeil working against Mickens. 
trying to get it inside the cap team. And that's how the third quarter will end. 59-21. St. Francis continues their march toward their fifth consecutive victory here on the road at DeVos Gymnasium. The Trolls trying to work hard. We'll see a few players we haven't seen here this season. I get a look at some varying rotations here. That's coming up. Fourth quarter is next here on the Trolls Sports Network. Kirsten Camholes seeing the floor for the first time tonight, the 5A junior out of Orland Park, Illinois. Officials are going to quickly confer. They'll have a meeting at uh, center court, as you can see right there at the logo, left side of your screen. Emil Williams Jr. back with you. Right now, there will be Looks like no starters on the floor for Trinity Christian. They had to confer on whose possession it will be, and it's going to be Trinity Christian basketball. So we'll have Lorena Arnett. Arnett along with Layla Gibson. Sarah Page, Kirsten Camholes, and Chloe Captain. She is double teamed in front of the scorer's table. The youthful squad here for the Trolls, but they will get an opportunity, especially this group on the floor right now, to get some quality minutes that certainly can help the team late in the season. Camholes got the offensive rebound, faded away on that putback. And the same thing applies here for St. Francis. They've got several freshmen as well, but they also counter with plenty of experience. Mentioned the five graduate students on the roster. Oh, Pellegrini had a shot blocked, or her shot blocked, excuse me, by Sarah Page. Pellegrini, the 5'7 freshman, had the right idea, but Sarah Page, the senior, not having any of it. And now a loose ball. We've got a tie up. And two back-to-back -back very good defensive possessions by Trinity Christian. Captain, we're going against Elena Janke. Janke has the basketball momentarily doubled. And now Pellegrini travels. So that's three consecutive. Really good possessions defensively. And they force a turnover to the Trolls. Now Gibson facing this double team. Chad Page up top, Captain still there, 15 to shoot. Captain at a poke to away. Mickens still on the floor. Braxton Mickens to the lane with the left hand. Mickens did start, and she is the only starter on the floor with the unit right now for St. Francis. And it looks like Mia Kennelly is going to perhaps get the nod. Maybe she'll replace Mickens. We'll find out. Kirsten Camholes blocked by Janky. Sixty-one twenty-seven, eight twenty-three remaining here in the fourth quarter. Nice jab step 
Janky into the lane. She'll score. Alina Janky. Quick 30-second timeout call by St. Francis. We start to look at uh, the way things are shaping up for St. Francis. Again, 5-1, and 2-0 and oh inside the CCAC. Their lone loss comes at the hands of uh, Marion University and in Indiana, 70-50. to 50. That was back on November 4th. They open with a win over Madonna University. The Cardinal Switch Franciscan Bowl 4 was where the they faced Marion University of Indiana and the University of St. Francis of Indiana and split those games by getting the win against St. Francis of Indiana. And they have rattled off three in a row since. Quick turnover, Graffio up ahead, blocked by Chloe Captain. Camels maybe with a partial block there. Uh, St. Francis is going to head to the line as they continue to sub in and give us new players to check out as well. Kaylee Ford on the floor, the 5'9 senior from Lockport, Illinois. Ford at the stripe. Goes one of two. If you're just joining us, again, it's been all Trinity Christian. Oh, excuse me, it's been all St. Francis. Unfortunately, the Trolls have had uh, trouble shooting from the field tonight. And it started certainly way back in the first quarter. Just five made field goals for the Trolls. And that's just the story of the ball game, unfortunately. But if you are a Trolls fan, you get an opportunity to kind of get a glimpse of some players who could help you as the season goes on. And you certainly want to look at it, at least that's how I'm going to look at it, look at this fourth quarter. How are these players going to help this team reach their goals, certainly of advancing to the CCAC postseason tournament, hopefully making a run late in the season? Because you want to be ready, especially as the years roll into uh, 2023. It's November. December will be here in just a few weeks. So these players on the floor and some who we've seen already tonight will play, especially for Coach Owens, will hopefully play a key role. Same thing goes for Coach John McCanty. He's got a pretty good start in five, certainly. Uh, players like Mia Kennelly continue to show what they can make. 67-21, 6.48 to play. Page still looking for her first field goal tonight. Chloe Cap team with an offensive rebound that put back on the short baseline will not fall. And Pellegrini looking to push again. Kennedy looking to settle in on that left baseline. Instead, it's Graffio, right wing. She was open from downtown. Rebound to Ford, blocked by Page. Tipped up, tipped up, into the hands of Ford again, and she's going to head to the free throw line. With 6.21 remaining here in the fourth. One of the interesting notes about this run that St. Francis is on currently, and I'm talking about during their four-game winning streak. Uh, the three games, excuse me. For the last three games, they have held opponents to a combined 23% field goal shooting, and that uh, they're going to add to that note tonight. 68-21, another offensive rebound. That time the lay-in will not fall. Ford has split a pair a couple of times. Ah. 
Quick turnover on the travel. But 6 3 to play. St. Francis, row brown unis, white numbers, white letters. Trinity Christian in their home alternate gray. That cyan, baby blue like color. Uh, the navy blue trim as Harris is fouled with 5.53 to play. A look ahead for Trinity Christian. Coming up next, they will head to St. Ambrose. They will travel to Davenport, Iowa, and the Quad Cities. They will head to Lee Loman Arena. And we'll take on again St. Ambrose this Saturday at 1 p.m. We'll check the St. Ambrose broadcast for the Trinity Christian fans out there for the live stream of that one. Harris makes a pair of free throws. And a quick shot on the other end for Trinity Christian. The Trolls have been stuck on 21 for a little bit. Trolls are in danger of having no players into double figures. Katarina Savick leads the team right now with nine points, and she went out early, I should say uh, early in the third quarter with what looks to be uh, perhaps an ankle injury. Certainly don't want to speculate, but uh, she did limp off the floor but was able to walk off. Ham holes from downtown. It's good. Kirsten Camos from the right wing. Makes it 70-24. And Leilani Harris taking full advantage of her opportunities for playing time tonight. Coach McCanty still coaching this group up. Boy, Harris. Could see her playing some significant minutes later in the season as well. Her shooting ability, you can you can just tell. Just in the early season, she's averaged five. And she's had the opportunity, of course, because St. Francis has been in a few blowout situations that they have been, fortunately for them, on the winning side of. So many players on this St. Francis squad with seeing probably more minutes than they, they would perhaps normally see in the beginning of a season based on the start here for St. Francis. Nice shot there. Beautiful setup. Laura Lee Thormeyer. Another freshman. Thormeyer, a freshman. And Leilani Harris, also a freshman. We've seen Talia Pellegrini a lot tonight. She, too, a freshman, along with Mia Kennelly. Four freshmen on the floor. Autumn... Scholl is also on the floor now for St. Francis, the 5'11 sophomore. Thormeyer again. That one's off the mark. Gibson, the pull-up, Jay. That is pure. Layla Gibson can shoot. Now watch her in warm-ups. Watch her coming out for the second half. And she definitely has the ability to knock down shots. I think it's just about the confidence for the 5-4 freshman from Joliet, Illinois. 75-26. St. Francis with the lead. Scholl may have been partially blocked by Captain. A rebound to Harris. And Cam Holes is going to be called for the foul. Braxton Mickens, a game high, 19 points on six of eight shooting. Four rebounds, two assists. Jordan Pyle, 12 points on six of 13. Six rebounds. And uh, But Leilani Harris might enter double figures here before it's all said and done. It's her first miss from the free throw line. She was four of four from the stripe. Sitting on seven points. She will knock down the second. So he has eight points. Hannah Swiatek with nine. 
Elena Janky, or Lena Janky, excuse me, with nine points as well. Harris will take a seat. Right, Kaylee Ford back into the ball game. Three minutes left here in the fourth quarter. Cam Holes pops high. Right hand dribble, a kick, Gibson again. Out of bounds, last touch by St. Francis. Both coaches still coaching their respective teams again. Both groups right now full of young players on the squad. Cam Holes not realizing they had the offensive rebound there for a moment, and now St. Francis will turn it over as Laura Lee Thormeyer, I think, dribbled it. What looked to be off her foot. Nice job defensively by Lorena Arnett. St. Francis will return home on November 30th. We'll have another tough task. Big shot there, Lorena Arnett. Arnett into the scoring column. That one was tipped out, maybe by Sarah Page or Gibson with 2.17 left to play. So trying to work it down to Autumn Scholl. She'll have it now. Zip inside quickly to four, keeps that pivot alive. They kick out to Thor Meyer. Three, no good, and a rebound to Arnett. 2.05 to play in this one. Gibson saw a momentary window. Cam holes. High post. Now left wing. That one rattled in and out. Loose ball. Sarah Page in a collision with Delia Pellegrini. The call foul on uh, Mia Kennelly. Seventy-six twenty-nine. As Pellegrini takes a seat, back in the game, Leilani Harris checking the team foul situation. I believe Cam Holes inside the cap team lost it for a second. Turns it's an up off the window. Minute 30 left in this one. 76-31. Kennelly from way downtown and buries it. Kennelly showing the range. She has eight points. Again, next home game for Trinity Christian, and we'll face St. Xavier. Always a tough task, of course. St. Xavier, St. Francis, Indiana certainly as well. Sarah Payne just could not get her shot to fall tonight. She came in early to try to get some shooting for the Trolls as we go under a minute to play in this one. Cam holds with the board. 45 seconds left to play. 20 second differential, shot clock, game clock. Cam holds. Turns that one over. Thor Meyer leaves for Scholl. Ford for three left wing. Looks like St. Francis is going to fall short of what their season average is to this point in regards to points per game at 84, but they get close. 20 seconds left to play in this one. Captain, oh, nice job with the left hand, Chloe. Chloe, Captain. Nice footwork. Under 10 seconds left to play. I don't think St. Francis is going to put up a shot. And your final score, 79-33, to St. Francis, Indiana, excuse me, of Illinois, the Fighting Saints get a victory on the road over the Trinity Christian Trolls.
they extend their winning streak against Trinity Christian to now 22 and 1. I believe it's, uh, uh, I should say, historically, 22 and 1 now versus Trinity Christian. And they have won the last nine in a row. Again, St. Francis over Trinity Christian. A tough loss for the Trolls, who just could not buy a bucket early on that carried over into the second quarter, into the third quarter as well. Meanwhile, St. Francis now improves to 6-1 and one on the season and 3-0 and oh inside the conference. Trinity Christian falls to 3-3 three and three overall, 3-1 three and one inside the CCAC as they lose their first conference victory or contest, excuse me. Again, final stats. Katarina Savick with nine points for the Trolls. Chloe Captain with five. Destiny Goodwin with four. Sophia Radish with three. Marina Arnett with three. Kirsten Camholes with three. Layla Gibson with two. Hannah Sharinga with two. And Layla McNeil with two. And for St. Francis, 19 points for Braxton Mickens. 12 for Jordan Pyle. Nine for Elena Janke. Elena Janke, excuse me. Anna Swiatek with nine, Leilani Harris with eight, Mia Kennedy with eight, Justine Charleswork with seven, and Laura Lee Thormile with three, and Kaylee Ford and Josie Graffio with each two apiece. St. Francis shoots 40% from the field, and Trinity Christian, unfortunately, 17% from the field. Again, the next home contest will take place November 30th versus St. Xavier. We'll have that one for you right here on the Troll Sports Network and the Women's Basketball Department. 5.30 p.m. tip-off, but the next game, St. versus St. Ambrose, as Trinity Christian will head on the roll this Saturday. Again, tip-off for that one is 1 p.m. That's going to do it for us here at DeVos Gymnasium. For everyone involved, Greg Gorm, Wendy Reed, Amy, and the entire crew and staff, my name is Emil Williams, Jr., St. Francis defeats Trinity Christian 79-33. to This has been a presentation of women's basketball here on the Trolls Sports Network.